Hey, welcome to another episode of Hit Results. That was a great intro. It was a mix of a touchdown celebration <laughs> and how every white person dances at a wedding. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And welcome to the Filler Fun Day episode where we just talk about fun stuff. Yeah. Nothing, Take two. No rhyme or reason to it. Uh, we just hang out. And yeah. we've got some fun stuff to talk about. We just... It's a cool set that we wanted to, to discuss a little yeah. bit. Um, before Things we get into that... To. Uh, check out our Patreon. Yeah, go take a look. Cool pledge goals. Uh, we've talked a lot about it, so now it's on you. Now it's on to you do guys. Some digging. the The link is in the description below. But, uh, we invite you to go check it out. Check out the tiers, and if you feel the notion to donate, we would greatly appreciate yeah, it. Obviously, cool. there is Thank no you. obligation. Please don't feel like you have to. Uh, but we we would enjoy the community aspect of yeah. it. So you get feel free. Cool perks yeah. eventually. Eventually, if we get enough people, Wait. you're so not good at that. I'm not. <laughs> Do it. Do it for the people. Magic. Whoa. Anyway, um. All right, guys. So Ooh, before... I got it in your chair again. <laughs> I flicked the card across the room and it just bucketed <laughs> right in his big old chair. Yes. Before. Bottom's we get life. to our main content. Wow, stay on topic, Will. I'm sorry. It's Sunday. We have our well-named segment, uh, the Kiki Weekly, where we just talk about a cool combo. Uh, this time, it actually is a used combo, which oh, is very weird. Prominent, um, um, destructive, good yeah. combo. Uh, so, for those of you, this is a little bit relevant because of the new Crucible of Worlds on a stick. Uh, but the original combo is Crucible of Worlds, which lets you play lands from your graveyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Strip Mine, which let you, lets you destroy a target land uh, by tapping it. It is a land itself. So the repeating combo being you Strip Mine an opponent's land. Mm -hmm. And then you get to play Strip Mine from your graveyard with the Crucible of Worlds. Um, Seems Basically fair. infinite land destruction. To make this a little bit better, uh, you generally would include something like Fast Bond. Uh, which lets you play an additional land on each of your turns yep. for one life. And you can do that as many times as you have life, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> 20 times, uh, probably. <laughs> hopefully. Um, so you can repeatedly strip mine with Fast Bond. Mm -hmm. On top of that, uh, a little Fast Bond combo is Courser of Crufix. Um, yep. You're able to basically gain a life every time you play a land. And because of Fast Bond, you can play infinite lands. So... What you get to do is literally infinitely strip mine with yes. absolutely no cost to you. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's um, really good. Yeah. So, question. Yeah. What happens in a mirror match, buddy? <laughs> Nobody does anything ever. Cool. No. Uh, is it really just whoever gets Crucible out first is kind of... Probably. I Honestly, I'm not sure because I haven't seen enough of hmm. the matchups to, to know that. But I would imagine whoever gets that combo out first and gets to strip mine infinitely is going to be in the better place. Um, that being said, because it kind of doesn't matter if your lands are destroyed, who really knows if you're yeah. going to win or not? <laughs> like, you can hmm. do whatever. I think I the it comes down to who actually counters a Crucible. It might be who you know resolves I mean? a Tormod's Crypt first. That's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Although that's all graveyards, isn't it? Uh, re uh, Relic of Progenitus would work. That's true. Um, mm. I mean, same ability, if, essentially, yeah. or Bajuka Bog, which is actually run in Legacy quite a lot. Bajuka Bog. Uh, a land that taps for black and enters the battlefield tapped and exiles all cards from a graveyard. <laughs> Seems pretty good. Zoinks! Uh, so, yeah, yeah just a cool combo. Again, more like focused in the Legacy because of Strip Mine. Uh, you can sort of append this to Modern a little bit. Uh, using Ghost Quarter. Mm -hmm. It's not as good because it only targets non-basic lands, and some decks, I mean, most decks, especially with Blood Moon running around, um, are going to be running some amount of basic lands, so right. you can get them off of some of their lands, for sure. Oh, it's still, it's still relevant. Yeah, but they're going to sure. be able to fetch up basic lands to get around it, and with Ghost Quarter, I believe you get a basic land anyway. Is that correct? With Ghost Quarter? Yes. Um, so... True. You know, it's okay, but not as good. It's not as competitively viable. Um, it is still interesting, okay. though. Yeah, it's I neat. like it, and it's a um, classic. It is a classic, tried and true. So, 
going into the main topic, we want to talk a little bit about Iconic Masters. Oh, yeah. I am so excited for this set. We are pumped for this to come yeah. out. Anytime they reprint uh, super good cards, yes. you know, people lick their chops. And uh, it is a Masters set. It's Iconic Masters. Right. And generally, the Masters sets are on just a whole other power level than any other sets printed. Oh, um, yeah. Modern Masters, Eternal Masters, all of these sets have been fantastic. Arguably, one of the modern masters was not as good as the others. Well, probably Eternal Masters but, was better. Well, Eternal Masters say. was amazing. Yeah. Um, but the latest modern masters was also quite good. Uh, I enjoyed mm -hmm. it quite a lot and bought a ton of it. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it paid off. I mean, that, oh, it's a way sure. to give value back uh, and reprint some of these cards that are important to Magic and yeah. that people need to have their hands on to be able to play that the game. That people love. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's also worth noting too, they are generally made for drafting. Um, and so you can draft any of these master sets, excuse me, and actually have a very powerful and very fun draft experience. A lot definitely. more fun, I would say, than any normal set because I enjoy the power level side of it. But well, yeah, you it depends what you like. Yeah, no, I think you're right though. I think the games are probably, they might feel a little more one-sided though, is my opinion. Uh, maybe, you but know? I think if, if given two players with equal skill level drafting, I think you're going to get fairly good games no matter what. I do think that you have the potential mm -hmm. to open things that will just win you the game more right, often. That's what I'm saying. Um, absolutely, I would agree with that. But mm -hmm. uh, that being said, I mean, there are cards in Amonkhet right now that do the exact same thing. I mean, there are cards. Well, yeah, that's true. You know, that's uh, fair. That's uh, fair. Uh, there are cards limited that do is, it. So. Is limited. <laughs> yeah, so... But they are very fun sets, and Iconic Master is uh, Iconic Masters is celebrating some of the most iconic creatures in Magic. Your dragons, uh, your vampires, your angels, your elves, your <laughs> merfolk. Yeah, the iconic creatures. The iconic the ones. bedrock of um, the lore. And so, what we thought we would do is just speculate a little bit, have an open conversation. None of this should be taken to heart. Oh God, no! We um, we have no idea what's going to be in this set. No clue. This is just some speculation because we thought of it. Yeah, uh, and so we're yeah. just going to talk about maybe what are some of the creatures that we'll see in this. Mm -hmm. Again, it is creature focused with the iconic right. master sets, so we're what hoping to see some good ones. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, to kick us off. Uh, and you already sort of mentioned this, the Lords, General Lords, Lord of Atlantis, things like that. Uh, I think we will see plenty of those in Probably this Probably the Lords of Atlantis. Um, there are some elves that have the plenty similar effect. Plenty of elves effect. that have a similar effect, yeah. Um, but yeah, Lords of Atlantis, Lord of the Pearl Trident, probably. Mm -hmm. something I think like that. so. I think, At I least mean, one of them. Again, if it's creature-based, I'm thinking, why not go tribal? Um, especially yeah. in the older days of magic, tribal was a little more prominent. Merfolk being one, mm. uh, elves, goblins, yes. dragons, <clears throat> even, which we'll get into a little bit. But uh, I, I think there are a lot of potential tribes that can be mm -hmm. sort of highlighted in this. And I think uh, to have the lords in there would just be perfect. It also sure. gives a needed reprint for some of them, I think. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um. So my favorite card, oh, I think is might make an appearance. Vampire Nighthawk. You think so? Yeah. It's not an insanely powerful card, but we've mentioned it's never really bad when you see it. Yeah. There are times when it's worse, but Vampire Nighthawk's a great card. Vampire Nighthawk is a great card. Value I don't know. Town. I, I think it's iconic among players, not iconic mm -hmm. among the story or the along story, with the story. Well, ignore the story for a moment. I'm here. just in magic these history. Sets, these sets aren't like for the lore for the story well right? no i know but i just mean they weren't so for instance like birds of paradise is one of mine that i'm thinking we'll see same birds same. of paradise was seen everywhere it's it was printed early early on it it's got some alpha. history it for magic in everything exactly don't, um don't take my birds points man i'm sorry man i'm just saying i, told I feel you like that junk mister i stole it a little bit i had it written down it's fine. um but it's fine that was played and and still is obviously in a lot of constructive yeah. formats it was also a big card in the very early stages of magic and vampire nighthawk yes. while a very good solid card is not really played in anything constructed at the moment or it, anything well, yeah, like that if we're saying like based on how much is it played there's plenty that you know yeah. it's not gonna be in here even though elves makes up a significant chunk of the meta how often do you really see elves doing significantly well in a gp that's fair and we're gonna see a bunch of elves in this set i think so i can yeah. guarantee it so 
the reason that I posit that Nighthawk it might get seen. Okay. Uh, it's been printed in a lot of sets, right? Yeah. It was in M11, M13, the original um, Zendikar block, I think. I believe so, yeah. When Malakur and Kickers and all that junk were running mm-hmm. around. So whenever Vampire Tribal was a thing during that time, you know, with Gatekeeper Malakur, with Blood yeah. Gas, with that stuff, Nighthawk made his way. Yeah. Because Nighthawk turned into a monster <laughs> uh, that's true so i mean so we may see it i think it, i would be happy to see it I don't get me wrong i couldn't think of another vampire maybe except for sangir vampire and blood Gast. olivia valdoon okay well sure i feel like that's a little more iconic but i might be well, wrong i don't know because she's not like that old she's well, from I mean, innistrad but like which was- sangir vampire that uh, well, sing your vampire, like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's I would say that's probably the most iconic vampire. But if we're saying like in terms of playability, Olivia's Olivia's on top for sure, right at the top. Yeah. Um, but I mean, hey, who knows? We we this will is probably, speculation. Yeah, this is speculation. This is just for fun. Um, but I hate you. Uh, it's so fair. I I have yeah. <laughs> I don't feel anything, so it's fine. That's really sad. Stoneforge Mystic is the next so. one on my list. Uh, I I mean, Stoneforge Mystic is yeah. one of the best two drop hate bear kind of creatures. I say Absolutely. hate bear, it's just played in Absolutely. hate bears most of the time. Um, it's insanely good. It's iconic in that it's played mostly everywhere that it can be played. Yeah. It was banned in modern. <laughs> for um, a good reason. For a very good reason. It's just too good. It. It's one of the best two drop creatures, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably the best two drop white creature. It would is. you agree? I would. Um, there's kind of a running conversation that uh, if each color is represented by its best two drop, yeah, whites is definitely. Yeah, I can't think of anything else that would be better. Um, um, in white, in white, except for the zero four goat that gains you life every turn. Oh, Nyx fleece ram. Yeah. Did I How remember did you a card name? For the first time since we've started this podcast, you got one. I feel something. All right. Confetti, balloons, this refreshing tangy drink. I've got one of my own, sir. <laughs> this one's for you, mom. <laughs> um, no, I I think Stoneforge is, if it, I, I wouldn't be surprised, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, uh, fair. that's if, fair. If it got a reprint, I'd be stoked. I love Stoneforge. I think I've got one, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and I'd love to get a playset, so. I've got four. No, you don't. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I have none. Or do I? You don't know. I do. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> anyway. Um, Geist of St. Traft is my Ooh, next one. that's a good one. Yeah, it plays with spirits and angels. Yeah. Right? yeah. And it took over standard. Um, took over modern for a bit too, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Geist of Saint Trap is just an insanely good card to uh, yeah. come out of turn three. Ooh. And what's so great Ooh. about it is it gives control decks like an early play that actually impacts yeah, the board. It's I, not just an early play. It's a no. I mean, it's play. it's insane. Yeah. It's for a hexproof creature that creates an angel that swings. You deal six damage every time. Like it's so good. Is it hexproof? Uh, the geist is the angel is not. that's right the angel's not um but there it's it's such a good card it is definitely iconic for the modern format i would say and even some yeah. outside of modern i think some of the the rogue decks like to play mm-hmm. it in other formats but yeah a lot and it of did like, take over standard for a lot sure. of blue white tempo and stuff yeah gets absolutely it. so geist is um, i'm looking for geist so to follow up after mm-hmm. Stoneforge Mystic, we're going to move to Black with one of the better two drops in Black, Dark Confidant. Yep, that's um, Black's. That's Black's best. Yeah, that's drop. Black's best. I so this got at least one of the reprints in Modern Masters. It might have gotten two. No, it was only in one set. It was originally in Ravnica. Mm-hmm. Was it not in the first Modern Masters? I believe it was in the first but I mm. I could be wrong. I don't remember. Anyway, Dark Confidant being a exceptionally good card draw engine uh, yeah, it's for a, black. It's which, a machine. Yeah, it's just so good. It's an engine and a backbone for so many decks, uh, not only in modern, but in legacy and things like that. Did you watch the Grand Prix where, who was it? Ah, I don't remember. <laughs> so this dude, he's staring at... Um, 
three lands that tap for uh, a black and a blue. They're a... You can fetch them. What are they? Watery Graves. Thank you. Three Watery Graves and a Swamp. And this dude's got a Dark Confidant. He draws his card, calls a judge. He's like, I can name Dark Confidant with this, right? And the judge is like, duh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Plays Pithing Needle. (laughs) And the guy's like thinking he's going to name Dark Confidant. Yeah, it resolves. (laughs) He names Watery Grave. Whoa! Boom! <laughs> what? I didn't even think of that. Yeah, dude. I Monster. didn't know that you can do that. Now you do. Wow, that's intense. I, that's a whole new world that has just opened up to me. Go ahead. <sighs> a whole new world. <laughs> oh, Will, <sighs> our resident songsmith. That is my. It's in my top five Disney movies. I'm not going to say top three. It's in my top five. We're talking a lot about Disney and Pixar. We talked about it last episode, too. When they're the best company making movies. I mean, movies. that's fair. Yeah. I mean, Disney owns Marvel and Star Wars. Man, we breached a whole nother level. <laughs> let's stay on magic. Yeah, let's do that. Dark Confidant. You're yeah. absolutely right. I think um, that's probably going to get printed. Is it a I human or so. a vampire? Human, I believe. Okay. Uh, something like that. It's, it's um, not a vampire. Interestingly enough, that is a card that was designed by a world's winner it was you're you correct yeah yeah along with a uh, meddling mage which is on my list uh chris pakula yes god i love chris he's so cool well he didn't nice. win worlds for that he won the oh no that was the invitational yeah. invitational winners not yeah. worlds sorry um yes chris pakula made meddling mage who made snapcaster you remember oh no i do not unfortunately you're right, that is one, but I do not remember. He played Grixis Control at one of the last events I saw him in. I don't remember his name. I don't know. He played Grixis Control with Thing in the Ice really well. Nice. Yeah. I like Thing in the Ice. It was um, Thing in the Nice? I don't know. Anyway, sorry. So yeah, Meddling Mage. Uh, Meddling Mage hasn't seen a reprint for a while, and it's a really good card. It is a really good card. Um, I don't know if it is iconic enough to make it right on this list but maybe it, it is a card that again one of our players created yeah and yeah. chris bakula of the players that people know about is probably one of the better known names i think so and he kind of he's got a little, little place in everyone's heart or I, at least i think so he, he should he should if you do not know who he is please check go out. check him check out. out he's a great he's guy so good he's so nice he's been playing the game probably since its inception oh 100 percent yeah um, um and he he did a lot to make sure that cheating was a he did huge he was no-no. a huge advocate uh, against cheating he's also one of the one of the few players i think that deserves to be in the hall of fame yes. but that is not yeah that's such a crime to the magic community in my opinion because the thing he's about chris is he has done a lot for the game not just being good at the game i mean as True. we touched on he's he's an advocate for no cheating uh, yeah. He's just an all-around great sportsmanship-focused kind mm-hmm. of person, and so he creates this great environment for everybody to play in. Yeah. Um, and he was sort of the ince- they're the start of that, I think, and he really, really pushed it. One of the one of the best examples I could give, I guess, is a player. So again, name escapes me. Is quoted as saying, uh, "I really can't explain to you why Chris Pakula matters so much to Magic." I would really just have to give you examples of tournaments where he is not present. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And like thinking about that, it's kind of like, wow. You realize how much of an impact if one he person has. can. Yeah, yeah, if one person changes the atmosphere, what what does that mean for the game? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, just thoughts. Just something or somebody to check out. Yeah, Chris Pickle. Yeah. Great guy. Great um, guy. So I'm I'm on these two drops. I'm gonna move to a different one. I'm gonna sure. say Mother of Runes. Oh nice who doesn't love mom oh mom uh one drop gives Mommy. protection to any creature Mommy. by tapping it she's iconic i mean she's like the definition yeah. of iconic you yeah. like um i love <sighs> mom and what i like about she's her my favorite she's great but she's not too broken no i mean it's just know? a one drop one one gives protection makes your creatures very difficult to deal with sure um so it protects a lot of stuff but i mean you know whatever and it's an infinite blocker yeah technically because you can give her protection so 
block, yeah. tap it, give it protection from whatever color the other creature is, and you have an infinite blocker. Yeah. Um, so that's a little interaction there, that yeah. tidbit of information. What else you got? Um, Llanowar Elves, my man. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> Again, like, it's not the best elf. No. It's not by any means the engine for elves' decks, usually. Yeah. But it is in pretty much every good elves' deck, I'll say. Yeah. It's a mana dork. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 that taps for a, for a mana. Yeah. In our uh, Principles of Agra episode, we talked about Land War Elves and how you gotta bolt that sucker. <laughs> Always. <laughs> bolt the bird, except this time it's an elf. Um <laughs> He's just, he's been in so many things. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's such a good, iconic yeah. mana dork. Also, it's kind of funny. In the If you think about the aesthetics of magic, mm-hmm. the original Llanowar elves only had uh, one elf in the art. No, You're sorry. Correct. That's the reprint. It was the reprint in Is the Is it the M10. reprint? Yeah. The original one had two, and they were ugly. Oh, they you're like right. super creepy yes, looking. They you were creepy looking. And then the newest <laughs> one only has one elf, and it's still yeah. Lana War elves a little uh little mistake there on on wizards end yeah sort of. <laughs> but like elves yeah they, elves is good there's been an elf in like every set i think pretty much uh, pretty, pretty much, much every set. yeah yeah maybe not um no there were elves in that they make for such mm. good flavor i mean <coughs> when you think of a magical world mm. elves generally are in that world yeah um, i struggle to think of one that they've not been in for yeah the story I um i don't know I'm going to say Knight of the Reliquary. Okay. So, I give you that. Here's the thing. You like it's your part of, you like your white stuff today. I do. You? It's weird. White's not at all my favorite color. No. Um huh. it goes against everything I believe in. But the thing about Knight of the Reliquary <laughs> <laughs> is um first of all, it's part of what's called the Maverick deck in Legacy. Yep. Maverick being a very impactful deck for and known for not really having any having anything in it that's amazing but still being kind of awesome well that's the thing it's just bare bones a yeah. really good deck it's just a good deck it's a deck that's of good it. stuff and knight of relic knight of the reliquary is sort of the key card for it um it, it is part of the deck family that made up the decks that i hate because i don't know what they do <laughs> um you remember yes i do remember that uh p- oh. previous deck tech episode go yeah. check it out um <laughs> shameless plug but it is also <laughs> beloved by one of yeah. Magic's finest wizards. That's right, I said it. That's He's fine. a wizard. Yeah. Uh, Brian Kibler. Ah, Kibler. He loves that card. The most handsome card. man in Magic. The most handsome man in Magic, although he's playing Hearthstone mostly now, I believe. Kibler will um, come back. Yeah, I miss Brian. But he loves Knight of the Reliquary. Mm. He's, it's just one of, the, one of those cards that he loves for some reason. And it's I mean, it's pretty easy to see why. It's a great card. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so I would say The Knight. Okay. Um, I've got Kitchen Finks as my next one. Next Thank one. you. Finally, somebody needs to reprint it. <laughs> like really though, Kitchen Finks Jeez. is a card that has. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, once it was printed, it didn't leave modern, and has always found a spot on a modern table somewhere. Yes. Like, it works with so many decks. My new favorite deck, Vizier <laughs> Company, <laughs> runs off Kitchen Finks and other things. But yeah, like come on. Kitchen Finks is great. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, one, it's good just as a value creature. Uh, yes. Against sure. aggro decks, you just block, gain life, block again. I mean, yeah. like, why not? Um, on top of that, you do get the combo potential with something like Vizier Company. Yeah. Uh, or Malira. Um, it's a, which is it's an thing. uncommon that's like 30 bucks. Is it that? No like way. That? It's not that much. It can't be 30 there was a time I might be thinking of Vendillion Click. Yeah, you have to be. Also on my list. Vendillion Click's a good one. I could see mm-hmm. that. I might have been thinking of V um, Click. I like True Name Nemesis. Yeah. Um this Did that not get reprinted in one of these sets? Um, I don't think so. It's not modern. I don't think or, you're, no, you're right. It's not modern legal, is it? I don't think so. Anyway, True Name Nemesis right. is just a great card in Bug. Uh, legacy true. bug decks run true. true name because it has protection from basically everything. So it's a player of your choice. Player of your choice, yeah. But, but I mean, yes. I mean, it's a one on one game. <laughs> like, no, wait, is it protection from players or player? I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't remember, but I know it's just super hard to deal with. 
Um, and it's it like is. a three one for three, right? Like not that powerful. But I gotta look it up right it's now. It's so good. Uh, I think it's protection from players. I believe you're correct. Um, so I would definitely say that. Another one that I would say is the original Thalia. Again, Ooh. moving back to white. Um, nice. Another good hate bear card, a two drop. No, it's from the chosen player. I'm sorry. Okay. I lied to you. So yeah, still good though. Um, but yeah, Thalia. I mean, it's Thalia. Like, yeah. who doesn't love Thalia? Not like well. Plenty of people don't. Well, <laughs> if you're playing against Thalia. Um, exactly. It's, it's not necessarily a card that I would say absolutely needs a reprint. I think <laughs> Thalia is at a decent price point where it's not too expensive, but it's expensive enough to give it some love. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I mean, I don't think that they're choosing these to say. No, I, it's I don't think so. Right? I just mean, I don't think it needs the reprint, but I but do think it fits enough. into the set. I got gotcha. you. Um, I got gotcha. you. But the last one I have... Tell me, go ahead and say Tarmogoyf. See, this is where I differ. I know you do, and that's why I'm saying it last. As it is an iconic creature, I don't think its creature type is iconic enough. <laughs> Not at do all. Do you even remember what it is? No. A goyf? Yes. Isn't that the type? I think it's a goyf. It's like a plant something. There are other goyfs. Name one. No. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My point made. But the thing is... Tarmogoyf is literally everywhere except standard. You're right. Like No, sorry, it's not a goyf. What is it? <laughs> it's a Lurgoyf. Oh. Much better. <laughs> I mean, it's played everywhere. Yes, but here's it's my super icon. Here's my thing also. A Lurgoyf. You cannot think of another one. <laughs> there are others. I know. I, I know, are. you're probably right. I, I just, know I'm right. I, I can can't picture think of one, but I can't think of the name. Well, um, and it just got reprinted in the last set. Of it did master but... <laughs> stuff. I know. I, know. I mean, still Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. Tarmogoyf is iconic, so it yeah. wouldn't surprise me. I just wouldn't. If I was making this set, I wouldn't put it in. I would. I'll say that. How about that? That's just because I want Tarmogoyf. So. Well, yeah, everyone wants Tarmogoyf. Yeah. We I've had a conversation the other night of if you're drafting. And you open a foil Tarmogoyf. Do you take it over a card that would better fit your deck? Um, which I, actually happened. Yeah, there was a yeah, pro that did this. Um, I don't remember his name. And I totally would. Um, I would totally I've, take it. I mean... Yeah. yeah. No, I would. Yeah, I think you just do. Like, I would. I don't care. I mean, here's the thing. People are in an uproar about this, and that's fair, because I get the argument that you should take the card that's better for your deck. You're building a deck. That's the point. Meh. Sure. However, picture yourself opening a foil Tarmogoyf and then a card that goes in your deck that you're going to play one and time. And then picture yourself giving it away. <laughs> yeah. Picture yourself passing it. Like, try to do that without crying. I will it's not, devastating. I, I will not. I will take it. No, Thank I take you. it. Like I'm the only scenario is if I open a Jace as my rare. That's the only scenario. I don't know. Even in that, <laughs> no, I would take a Mind Sculptor over Time Goy. Foil. Really? Mm -hmm. I would. I don't know that I would. I mean, Jace is my favorite card, probably just because I love Jace. But all right, it's like a super cliche favorite, right? Like most powerful planeswalker. That's not why I like him. I have nostalgia for I mean, Jace. That's second more to Tivolt. Don't insult the god. Please. Sorry, second best to Vault clearly is the better one. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I think in that instance, I'd mm. probably still take the Goyf. All right, because at that point you're drafting for value, and Go foil Goyf is oh, way sure. more valuable yeah. than Jace. Like yeah, Jace okay. is like fifty. Even regular Goyf is a hundred. So like you're looking at more value uh, no matter that's what. Fair. Like, because at the heart of it, yeah. you are definitely just drafting the value. Yeah, if you're picking so, up a foil Goyf. I mean, you know, although I probably wouldn't sell it ever. No, I'd keep it. But yeah, okay. that's just because I like collecting a crap ton of cards. Yeah. Did we say um, birds? We yeah, said birds. We mentioned it. I've got Storm Breath Dragon written down, which I know Theros is not like the most loved set ever. So iconic. <laughs> but dragons being an iconic like race in magic. See, I said Shivan Dragon. Which, uh, definitely. Which I think is more definitely. iconic, although Storm Breath Dragon is just better. Well, but, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. It's a stronger dragon. Yeah. So yeah. I would see him putting it and in. Maybe dropping I, it to rare and putting it in. 
Yeah, maybe. I I buy the argument for Storm Best Dragon a little bit, uh, because it was good in the standard, and it's actually in modern right now in the land destruction deck and things like that. It's not a bad card. It gets played. Sure. Um, it's not everywhere or anything like that. We but. didn't even mention any Hydras, dude. That's fine. Nary a Hydra. <laughs> Hydras Hydra are going to be mother. It. Oh, maybe. That's a good one. Genesis Hydra. Yeah, like that's Genesis the one Hydra. I was thinking of. Genesis um, Hydra. I want Genesis Ooh, Wave. What if the Titans are back? Oh. I would love that. I would absolutely I love, love that. I love the Titans. The only one that really, that I care about is Primeval Titan, but. I like Grave Titan, though. Grave Titan I like, but I mean. Primeval Titan is it's probably like, the best. Clearly the best yeah. one. <laughs> like, um, Sun Titan's good. It pulls off a lot of combos, and Grave Titan's good at just taking over the board. Yeah. But Primeval Titan leaves it's a long bad. lasting effect, even if it dies. It just doesn't matter. Because <laughs> you get lands, you so ahead. you can just yeah. do other things. <laughs> like Yeah. So oh. but that's not a bad point. I, I like the Titans. And what about Restoration Angel, man? I you know, I kinda hope it's not in the set. What? I know. I love Resto Angel, but it's so good. Here's the deal: what? because the past, the latest Modern Masters set had Resto Angel, oh, I ended up with right. like twelve Resto Angels. I forgot it was in that, actually. and I kind of just don't want any more. <laughs> Give them to me. I'll take more. No. Oh. Anyway, moving off of that, <laughs> are there any more cards that you wanted to mention? <sighs> Titans, Angels, Hydras, to... Kiki Jiki. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> Maybe some Phyrexian stuff gets in there. What about the, um, you know what I'm talking about? The Praetorians. What about those guys? Probably not, actually. They weren't <laughs> iconic enough, because they really didn't get played. Slivers. Except for Elish Norn. Freaking Slivers, man. <laughs> Freaking Slivers. Oh, I don't want sli Freaking Slivers. Freaking Slivers. I love Slivers. I do, but... I love original Slivers. Yeah. I'll say that. Well, yeah, of course. Because you play with new slivers and they fixed it, quote unquote, to make it better for you. Some of the newer, new ish, like the original slivers were back with the old card frame and yeah. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Legion, I believe, was the set, things like that. But like Mana Web sli Sliver is a newer one. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, yeah, but you see, here's the thing. Yeah. New slivers say all slivers you control get whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Old slivers. Oh. Old slivers. Old slivers say all slivers get this. <laughs> so that's even your opponents. I mean that's so fair. mirror matches get just stupid. Yeah, in fact, um a little plug for the command zone. Um oh, not a sponsor. Um No, definitely not. <laughs> no, good but they're Lord, cool guys. We wish. Um <laughs> no, the command zone is awesome. If you mm -hmm. haven't checked them out, you should. They did a video specifically where they did four sliver decks as the commanders. Oh, yes. It was awesome. That makes me happy. It was just that insane gameplay, heart. right? Like oh, everything man. gets buffed. Yeah, it was super cool. So I, I, I vote that you go check that out. I vote. Yeah, that sounds fun. I'll do it tonight, <clears throat> actually. Okay. As do I'm it. sitting down with my nightly bowl of Cheerios. It's a weird thing to eat. At Multi grain night. Cheerios. I like to be regular. <laughs> with that, we come to our <laughs> final segment of the day. <laughs> It's a cracker pack segment. Sponsored by Grand, Grand Slam. Slam. <laughs> Thank you guys. Grand Slam Cards and Collectibles in Rock Hill, oh South Carolina. Uh, they're a great <laughs> bunch of folks. Um, they are really into opening Pokemon stuff right now. Yeah. And neither Kevin nor I are into the TCG uh, Pokemon that is, but they do a lot of giveaways with that. So if you are into that, check them out. If you yep. like comics, baseball cards, Magic, obviously, Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever. Yeah. Look at them. They might uh, have something you like. They're, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, they're setting up an online store soon? They are working on it. They are. They have a website up. It's linked in the description along with their Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, they are working on getting an online store up as soon as possible. That way, if you're not in the area, you can shop with them uh, anytime you'd like. So yeah. uh, hopefully they'll have that up soon. We'll try and uh, get a date, maybe, if they've got one set. We'll try and figure that out. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, but yeah. um, we do open our packs for a specific card. Uh, mine is Gideon of the Trials that I'm looking for. What about you? Uh, mine is Combat Celebrant, and uh, didn't have him for me no, either. No. Yeah, what'd you get? I got Rags to Riches, an okay. aftermath card. Two anything, two black. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Pseudo Sweeper. Then Riches says each opponent chooses a creature he or she controls. 
you gain control of those creatures. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, no, and I also I like don't like it for limited. No. Um, because to play rags first feels real bad. Yeah, um, for sure. And minus two, minus two for four just ain't great. No, I'll it be, is not. I'm going to be honest with you. That being said, we do this every time we open a pack. Now, we look at things that we would maybe select if we were drafting it. Sure. And again, I have Ruthless Sniper here. Um had the same thing last episode yeah such a great card yeah it really is and i think that has to be the the pick i don't have many other strong things i have a cartouche of ambition which is good i don't like pitiless vizier really yeah i do it's it is good if i've like again i know with ruthless sniper it kind of this is going to be counterintuitive it's great if i have something to cycle but at four i don't want to play a four two that dies indestructible could be indestructible it's gonna be indestructible. I mean, it's Could a build be. around. Uh, not, not pitiless vizier. No, because that's at four. Come on. I'm saying it's so good. much stuff blocks that now. Whatever. And if I've not got a cycler, it's, whatever. It's just too whatever. Toughness. I'd much rather. There's no, a reason. I I agree. Ruthless sniper is definitely the pick. There's. I'm not. Yes. <laughs> Although that being said, if this cycles, I'm taking it. Oh yeah. Right. Because if I've got ruthless sniper, if it my cycles, first if it wheels. Oh. Those correct terms. Excuse me. Um, if it scoops around in the hands of cards again, <laughs> if it goes to my person, um, I'll I'll place it into my book of cards that I'll um, wheel for this game. Okay. Anyway, I What'd didn't get? get Gideon, um, but I did get a good card. Uh, Channeler Initiate yeah, is a great ramp card. Probably going to be my pick here. Um, it's a 3-4 for 2. It gets three one, negative 1, negative 1 counters. You remove 1 and tap it to add a color of mana to your mana pool. But you get to pick it. <laughs> um, a lot That's of good. play with some of the negative 1, negative 1 counters. Uh, mm-hmm. So green, black is really the focus with that. Uh, but again, being able to play any color is pretty awesome with, with the mana ability. True. Um, other cards that I do like, Pitalist Vizier. Uh, not a why. first pick, but I do like it. Uh, Final Reward is just a good removal spell it's expensive i know but in limited yeah. that's fine it's instant speed and exiles it so sure. it's sort of awesome in that way um mm. other cards that i like uh unwavering initiate is quite good uh in a white deck it's not amazing but it's a good card lord of the accursed if i'm gonna focus in zombies this is obviously a yeah, build around sure. card um i don't think you draft zombies great. though really i don't think so if you are just being past them go for it but oh well, yeah it's really tough to niche into the zombies, yeah. the zombies archetype. Uh, Spring to mind is okay. Yeah. Um, I also want to point out I got three cartouches, all of oh, which wow. are the worst three cartouches. <laughs> uh, yeah. Red, white, and blue cartouches. Not my, not my favorite. Yeah. Um, but I do the blue cartouche is okay. Uh, it's probably the the best of those yeah. three. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the third cartouche of mine, right? Yeah, I think so. Being, Green, black, blue. Yeah red white i like white red <laughs> we had an episode about this and yeah, i have did. i have changed my mind that's fine well we mentioned this in an episode but yeah i think um <clears throat> the red is the worst